let's ask ourselves, are air fryers healthy? And when I make a video on any health topic, I tend to get a little ahead of myself, miss some really simple stuff. So let's take a step back and initially answer a very basic question, which is, you know, are fried foods bad for you? And that ties in with the conventional wisdom of fat being bad for you, which really depends on food quality. It has nothing to do with the macronutrient profile of the food. Of course, most fried foods are actually unhealthy because they're being fried in the most toxic, poison, oxidized, rancid vegetable seed oils possible. Typically soybean oil, sometimes peanut or canola. These deep fryer oils are also high in omega-6 linoleic acid to the point where they are the actual cause of heart attacks if consumed frequently enough for many, many years. I guess the television is telling a little bit of truth for once when they say those fatty fried foods are bad for you. Thing is, those same people saying that are the ones that put those poison vegetable seed oils in your food in the first place. When we move to higher quality, more natural, non-oxidized fat sources with usually high saturated fat content, which is not prone to oxidation, whether it's beef tallow, butter, or coconut oil, those are actually very healthy for our bodies. Problem is, I've never seen one bag of potato chips or french fries that doesn't have vegetable seed oils. And these restaurants certainly aren't putting hundreds of dollars of beef tallow in their fryers every day. You guys like to mention that McDonald's used to use beef tallow for their french fries years and years ago, and people generally were a lot healthier back then before these vegetable seed oils were so common. I've done several videos on them, omega-6 fatty acids, heart disease, so I won't go further in depth here. So if you guys are watching on TikTok, go to YouTube, Frank Tofano, to see more about that. And when those mainstream sources are asked if air fryers are healthy to cook with, they give a generic cookie cutter response. Oh well, it's still a fried food even if it lowers the fat content, so it's still bad for you. Yeah, which we can dismiss because they're a bunch of clowns, and anyone that actually understands nutrition or follows my dietary advice will avoid those very harmful vegetable seed oils. The real concerns about air fryers are two things. One, the material coming in contact with the food, especially plastics when heated. Two, the radiation EMF levels coming off the air fryer. And these principles of material and radiation apply to any cooking appliance you use, whether it's a microwave, a stove top, an oven, any sort of device requiring electricity can be tested in the exact same way I'm going to do now. Now, I've been using an air fryer for the past few months just because it's so convenient and easy. You know, you pop some potatoes in here, 15 minutes later, you have delicious french fries. You don't have to spend an hour or two making a ridiculous restaurant-style french fry recipe. Unfortunately, it is made of plastic, and there are so many synthetic, unnatural materials we come in contact with. It's basically impossible to eliminate them unless you're living like the Amish. The main downside to plastics is chemicals as well as estrogens that can cause toxin buildup, lower testosterone levels, damage our endocrine systems, basically all of the hormones produced in our bodies are inhibited. I think after the first few times you run this, most of the harmful residue would be gone. The basket inside the air fryer tends to be metal, so there's no plastic in contact with the food outside of the airflow and the heat from the other plastic parts in it, but I don't think an air fryer made entirely of steel exists, that would be a solution. I believe the machine would get way too hot. And until someone does testing on this, I can't say for sure, but I don't see a fast degradation of the lining on this air fryer. And I think if it was a major issue, someone would have found out or said something. As long as you clean it really well, run it a few times initially, the plastic leaching, it's hard to say. You know, there are fumes that come out of the back of this when you're cooking, and the fumes did not smell good to me. So, uh, if anyone knows any resources on that, but for now, I've been using it. I don't feel too horrible after I eat the food, but it's definitely up in the air. You know, is there plastic or some chemical leaching from the lining of this when cooking in this? The main question you guys have been asking me over these past few years, I mean, it's been a while now, you know, these air fryers have been popular for a pretty long time. 
you know, do they emit EMF, harmful radiation? I'm assuming someone else has done testing at this point, but I haven't been able to find the results, haven't seen it. I do have a whole playlist on EMFs, on different types of fields, you know, and what we want to see is if this emits radio frequency or magnetic fields. Radio frequency like cell phones, routers, smart devices, which this is not a smart device, so I don't think it emits radio frequency. Magnetic fields from power lines, some cooking devices are a possibility. And if you guys want to understand those fields more, what they are, why they're harmful, look at my EMF playlist. I'm not going to go further into that. We're going to start with the magnetic field testing with my magnetic field meter. Again, if you guys want to know what these meters are, check out that video. So we're going to turn the meter on. We're going to set it to magnetic. We're going to see that the current magnetic field levels in this kitchen are around 20. And when pointed in this direction at the air fryer, they go up to 70, but it's off. So um, that's just the, the natural levels in the environment right now when pointed in that direction. So we're gonna turn the air fryer on and see if anything changes, AKA does the magnetic field level go up? Yes, very bad. That's not good. <laughs> okay, hold on, let's back up a little bit. Okay, so when, when the machine turns on, the levels very close to it are, I would say, dangerously high. So you don't wanna be standing over here, but magnetic field levels dissipate very quickly. So when I'm even just like five feet away from this thing, the levels are much lower than they were. And then when you're about 10 feet away, it's better. So uh, I guess the answer to that is yes, they are dangerous. Uh, stand far away from them when using them. So, you know, don't stand by it, avoid it. And I think it's okay to use otherwise. And the thing is, guys, when you use any sort of cooking device, there are magnetic fields coming from it. If you have like an induction cooktop, sometimes even electric cooktops, they have high magnetic field levels. So it's not just stuff like the microwave has very high EMF levels, but you can't get far enough away from a microwave. This is actually not that bad in a sense, like the fields dissipate very quickly and they're not super, super powerful. Now... We're going to try the radio frequency fields, do the same thing before the machine is on. There, there's no radio frequency right now in this kitchen, so it's low. If we turn this on, as I suspected, there is, there is no radio frequency emitting from this device. So the concern is definitely the magnetic fields. You know, do they stay on after the machine is off? Not really. So. As long as the air fryer is operating, you want to be away from it. So put the food in, get away from it. You know, is, is it worth the convenience issue? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think about that. Now that I know that, I'll have to think about it. But hopefully this helps you guys out and, you know, gets you staying away from cooking devices in the kitchen while they're in use. And if you, if you do get these meters and test stuff out yourself, then you know, hey, maybe I should just spend an extra 10 minutes frying some potatoes in a pan instead of doing this. Let's actually see. I don't think this electric stove emits. I don't think electric or gas stoves emit any radio frequency. Oh, they do. Actually, I'm wrong on that. So I, th I thought only induction cooktops emitted magnetic fields, but electric stoves do as well. It's just not nearly as high as the, uh, as the electric air fryer. So that actually brings up a really good question. What's more harmful? Standing at this electric stove while it's at you know, a moderate magnetic field level for a long time or being away from the air fryer. I would argue that you're actually better off just popping the food in the air fryer, getting away from it as opposed to standing by the stove and cooking. So it's tough. It's, it's tough living with modern technology and these harmful radiation levels that governing bodies don't care to tell you about that might be harming your health. So if this helped you guys out, you can check out frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. Of course, under this, I am wearing my Wi-Fi shielding clothing which is good for protecting against all radio frequency in the house. And as I said earlier, guys, check out my EMF playlist videos to learn more about this. So if you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.